crazy that one in two Americans are worried about what's in their bank. I mean, that is the absolute setup for the mother of all bank runs. This is Kaiser Johnson with Liberty and Finance, and this is the Miles Franklin Weekly Special for May 2nd through May 9th, 2023, while supplies last. In our first special in more than six weeks, we are excited to feature the 2023 Australian Silver Kangaroo at just $4.85 over spot. The 2023 Silver Kangaroo from Australia are renowned for their four nines fine purity as well as their recognizability and design. Like many other coins, they come 25 to a tube. However, unlike others, the Australian Monster Box is just 250 coins, making it the most affordable Monster Box available especially with a premium of just $4.85 over spot per ounce. And finally, silver kangaroos are IRA eligible. And if you'd like to learn more about a precious metals IRA, an IRA holding assets in a private depository rather than a bank or brokerage, call us and we'll be happy to help you in that process. To order this special or any of the many other options we have available, call us at 1-888-81-LIBERTY. That's 1-888-815-4237. We're available after hours and on weekends, and we look forward to speaking with you. Hey everyone, this is Elijah K. Johnson with Liberty and Finance. And back with us today is our good friend, Bill Holter, uh, formerly from jsmindset.com, working with Jim Sinclair. Now, billholter.com, where he writes his original articles there. Uh, Bill, thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks for having me back, Elijah. Well, it's great to have you on again. We have uh, very many viewers questions uh, today in this unprecedented time. We're seeing a lot of bank failures, obviously, in the last couple months. This last weekend, we saw First Republic go under, and now we are seeing uh, PacWest and um, Western Alliance having issues. The stock the stocks plunged for those companies, and actually trading was halted. So your perspective on the ongoing banking crisis right now? Yeah. Even to this point, uh, with just what the banks that have gone down uh, over the last, what, six weeks, eight weeks or so, uh, they they total more uh, in assets, if you will, uh, than the total of 2008. So this thing's already bigger than 2008, and it's just getting started. And we had the Fed raise interest rates yesterday. Um, it looks like they are intent on really breaking something, and it really doesn't matter. I mean, if they don't raise any further from here, things are breaking. So this thing is going to domino. It is going to uh, it is going to collapse. The Fed is going to be forced to turn around and ease. And what has worked so many times in the past, in my opinion, this time will not work. Uh, won't even come close to working because once you get the Fed easing. Then we're then we're already in a in an inflationary or high inflationary uh, period. That's going to shift gears and move into hyperinflation. So the Fed is really they're backed into a corner. They created the problem, and the problem's not going away. Now it does seem like a lot of people in the mainstream may be missing the issue, as you mentioned. Uh, the end game is a lot of inflation, where a lot of people out there are saying, "Well, as long as my uh, funds are secure, you know, the people who invested at uh, had funds more than two hundred fifty thousand at First Republic." Um, Silicon Valley Bank, they were all covered. So that's fine. Every, everything's fine. But it seems like it's not about FDIC insurance. Are, your, are you going to get the dollars? It's about what are the dollars going to be worth uh, once this comes to an end? Exactly. Yeah, no, that's exactly correct. They, they are in the process of destroying the dollar. And I mean, obviously, all you have to do is, is see what foreign nations are, are saying and what they're actually doing. Um, the dollar is is absolutely losing reserve currency status. And that's a big problem. Uh, a lot of people know, very few people have thought this through, that once the dollar does lose reserve currency status, the U.S. does not produce what we consume. We import uh, the bulk of what we consume. And if the dollar is no longer a reserve currency and trading nations say, yeah, we'll trade with you, but we want gold or we want uh, Chinese yuan or or rubles or what have you. Uh, it's it, we lived off of what I 
what I term the never pay model. Um, you know, we, we import goods and, and our biggest export are dollars. And what does it cost to create a dollar? It doesn't cost one penny. It definitely doesn't cost anything for them to create dollars. And as you mentioned, it seems like what the Fed will have to do is reverse, which will only cause more inflation here. Um, I, we did have some viewers questions really relating to the current events that we're seeing right now. And how do we protect ourselves? You've talked about in the past um, precious metals, obviously. And I know you're a big advocate of junk silver, which is it's very interesting right now. It seems like when we see a, a lot of demand for precious metals, at least the last couple of years, we've seen the premiums on junk silver is just junk silver just skyrocket. So I was wondering if you could, um, we have a few viewers questions asking about junk silver. If you can give your opinion on that. Another uh, viewer, Christine, is wanting, wanting to know your perspective on 40% junk silver, because I know the premium is quite lower on those half dollars. Yeah, the problem with 40% is, you know, you're looking at more than two coins per coin. And it's really not well known that 1965 was the only year that it was, was minted. Uh, 40% junk is, is not really understood. So it, the reason you want junk is for barter purposes. And if it says 1964 and earlier, you know, a farmer, uh, they're, they're going to know that it's real. It's readily recognizable. You can drop it on a counter and you can hear the difference. Uh, the, the, the savings that you get on a premium for a 1965 versus a 64 and earlier, I think is negated by the lack of knowledge that there's even any silver in a 65. So, I, you know, I would stay away from the 65s, the 40% junk. Uh, the whole idea with junk silver is $1.38 equals one ounce. So if you've got dimes, that's basically 14 dimes. It gives you 14 transactions in a system down scenario. And my thought process was, yeah, it's, it's usable. Uh, it's a small denomination. But it's going to be once once the system does come down, uh, you know, in a credit collapse, and barter barter starts to happen, uh, junk is going to be the most sought after form of silver. So, I mean, hands down, in my opinion, ninety percent junk is the best form of ownership for an American to own. We have another viewer's question about precious metals. When does one know? they have enough stacked precious metals for the coming reset to collapse. And is it even possible to prepare for such an event? Well, yeah, you can prepare for it. Can you prepare 100%? No. I mean, you're going to miss something unless you have the wealth to buy a private island. And I say private island because, uh, you know, you, could de you, you can defend an island. I mean, you can't against a, a Navy, but you can pretty much defend an island. And that's one of the big problems is that, when this thing happens, in my opinion, we are going to have a spell, I don't know, two weeks, two months, uh, six months, who knows. But we're going to have a lack of rule of law. It's going to, it's going to look like Mad Max. And if you've got stuff stacked up, you're going to have to, you're going to, have to protect it. Uh, to answer when do you know if you have enough, I mean, just do the best you can. My, my standard answer now is when somebody asks, you know, how much of my portfolio or how much of my wealth should I put into gold and silver? My standard answer is whatever you don't want to lose. So, you know, if you put the bulk of your, your assets into gold and silver, and you do that because gold and silver can't bankrupt and the world is bankrupting, that's, that's the reasoning behind it. To answer the question how much, there's no way to say how much you're going to actually need but you do as much as you possibly can. And if that's not enough, it's not enough, but you tried your best. Um, you know, you could have $25 million and, you know, you might want to, you might want to store uh, or, or own uh, $23, $24 million worth of metal because you know, it's not going to bankrupt and you've got enough money to pay bills for six months or a year if the system stays up that long. But I think anything that you've got in banks, uh, Anything is certainly over the 250 you're going to lose. And even if you get paid the 250,000, like you said, they're dollars and what are dollars going to pay? 
I mean, it's it's very conceivable, and people will laugh at this, and the trolls will come out. Uh, but it's it's certainly conceivable that one ounce of gold could be two hundred fifty thousand dollars, and there's no way to know where gold is going to end up because we don't know how much gold is actually held by the U.S. And we have no no idea how much more money supply is going to be out there. I mean, if you did the math now, I did the math, I think it was two or three years ago, where if the U.S. had to pay its debt off just just beyond books debt, the thir- uh, it wasn't 31, I think it was 23 or 24 trillion at the time. Um, and assuming the U.S. did have the gold that they say they have, the number was over 125,000. And just keep in mind, look what happened in Weimar, Germany. From 1917 to 1923, one ounce of gold went from 170 Reichmarks to 87 trillion Reichmarks. So anybody who laughs at me, uh, you know, using a any number that I use or any number that anybody uses is missing the point. Uh, one question that I think a lot of people are asking right now, I, I think I heard a statistic that 50% of Americans are concerned about their money in their bank, and that seems so unprecedented right now. The number was 48%. It came out yesterday. I was just going to say, that's cr- it's crazy that that one in two Americans are worried about what's in their bank. I mean, that is the absolute setup for the bank run of the mother of all bank runs. Right. And I know you've said in the past um, on previous interviews that the amount of time it'll take for the system to collapse, it would could happen within 72 hours. And that's kind of a long time frame for you. Can you expand on that as we see things accelerating? What do you think the catalyst is going to be and how fast do you think the system could come down? Um, I have no idea what the catalyst. I mean, there's there's a hundred different possibilities to what the catalyst would be. My guess is that something happens on a Friday and markets don't open on a Monday. So you go to bed, you know, fat and happy on Friday. You didn't hear the news. And then you wake up Saturday morning and and you're frozen. Everyone's frozen. If markets don't open Monday, then how can you move? And keep in mind uh, that 72 hour number. That's pretty much how long a human stomach can go without food. And you'd be amazed at how many people have virtually nothing stocked back or, or, you know, stored. It was definitely interesting back during COVID times, uh, seeing the empty shelves at uh, grocery stores, uh, you know, all the toilet paper issue and everything. It seems like that may have been maybe in your view, a uh, kind of snapshot, just a tiny snapshot of what we could see coming soon in the future. Yeah, and, and I live in Texas. I mean, we have hurricanes that hit the coast, and you know, I've seen I've seen grocery stores be wiped out in 24 hours. It, you just have to understand, there's not little elves in the back room, you know, uh, baking loaves of bread. This stuff has to get shipped in, and understand that that when this does happen, credit is going to stop, and when credit stops, everything stops. Trucks don't move. Uh, you won't be able to get uh, gas at gas stations. They'll be emptied. Grocery stores will be emptied. And basically, you have whatever you have, and that's all you have. And you better be able to protect it. We have a viewer, uh, Mark, wanting to know, after everything crashes, which I believe it will, what will be the ratio of gold and silver? And also, what will be the rate uh, what will be the ratio there? And we have a few viewers' questions along this same line of thinking. Gold versus silver, wh- what is the best uh, position right now? I've recommended for quite a while now since the ratio got over 70 to 1. It's about 80 to 1, 79, 80 to 1 now. Um, if if storage is not an issue, I don't have a problem with somebody going almost 100% silver um, you do want some gold so that if you had to bug out, you could travel with some, you know, some kind of wealth. Um, but you definitely want to be overweighted silver. And as the ratio comes down, then you leak a little bit of silver out, turn it into gold, and you'll end up with more gold ounces than what you would if you just bought it, you know, up front. You ultimately, when everything smooths out and we have a new currency system, you know, you typically want to be 70% gold, 30% silver. But right now, you want to be at least the reverse of that 70-30 in favor of silver, if storage is not an issue. 
And when I say if storage is not an issue, you know, if you're talking big money, uh, let's say you're talking, you know, a million, two million, five million plus, it's pretty hard to store a million dollars worth of silver. I mean, you're talking 1,500 pounds, 2,000 pounds. I just want to add to that. Um, that's the reason for the 16 to 1 ratio for hundreds of years. Even though it came out of the ground at just under 10 to 1, in other words, there was 10 ounces of silver for every one ounce of gold, so God's ratio is 10 to 1. But man discounted it to 16 to 1 simply because you had to, you had to transport 10 times as much silver as gold in order to have the same amount of capital. So that's why it was discounted to 16 to 1. Now they've discounted it to 80 to 1, which is ridiculous. But that's the reasoning for the original discounting of silver was because you've got to carry so much more of it for the same amount of capital. Now, on the same topic of silver here, we have a viewer wanting to know um, about the extreme uh, extreme premiums we're seeing on the silver eagles and the constitutional silver, the junk silver. It seems like everyone is wanting the U.S. minted products right now. Um, how do you see that bifurcation as the system resets? How do you see that the premiums on those U.S. minted products getting higher or lower in comparison to the silver price? When all is said and done, if we go through a confiscation, the, the bifurcation may be infinite. And what I'm getting at is it's very possible that we have a confiscation of, of gold, less probable that we'll have a confiscation of silver. But if we were to have a confiscation of silver, how would it, how could the U.S. Mint sell you an eagle today? And then next week, demand that you turn it back in. Now, they could demand you, you turn in maple leaves or Kruger ants or bars or generic coin or whatever. But how do they turn around and say, you have to sell your eagles or your pre-1933 gold in? So that's the reason for the higher premium for U.S. mint lineage coin. And this is something that I've talked almost exclusively about since 2016-17 is that you you want U.S. mint lineage coin from the, the standpoint of uh, trying your best to guard against any type of confiscation. Now, that's a different, actually, line of thinking than um, it seems like the mainstream idea and often put out there is that the collectibles, right, the graded coins, the pre-33s will be the ones that are not confiscatable. Yeah, that's the ultimate, the pre-33. That's the ultimate because they are old. They're uncirculated. They're collectibles. They are legally considered collectibles, and there is law on the books, and they can change the law. So I'm not saying that, no, they can never, ever confiscate the pre-33s. But the pre-33s would be the hardest to confiscate. Then it would also be difficult, not impossible, but it would be more difficult to confiscate eagles as opposed to bars uh, or foreign sovereign coins or generics. Um, those would be much easier with the stroke of a pen. Those could be confiscated. But like I said, it, it's much more difficult if you actually pay the mint you know, you pay your dealer, the dealer bought from the mint. Uh, if you pay the mint today for a silver eagle or a gold eagle, and then they turn around and say next week, but you have to turn it in, you'll have all kinds of lawsuits, and that would be tied up for, I think, quite a while. When it comes to the new currency system that you mentioned just a while back and how people eventually oh, it should probably be in gold, um, this viewer wants to know how you know the Fed and other uh, central banks around the world are looking to create central bank digital currency. Many have already done this. They're wanting to know about civil disobedience. How are we going to live in this system? It seems like a pretty bad system to live in where everything can potentially be tracked. Um, how do you see that long term playing out for those who don't want to partake in the central bank digital currency? Um, it'll be much more accepted in metropolitan areas. It will not be nearly as accepted in rural areas. Uh, I believe the central bank digital currencies uh, are, are basically being created so that they can track absolutely everything you do. And 
They will turn the accounts off of you, me, anyone who talks about what we're talking about right now. They'll have the ability to shut you off and kill you. Um, they'll also have the, the ability to decide where you're going to travel. I mean, they may put a 15-mile ring around you where your card doesn't work if you leave your area. So it's all about control. Um, yeah, and I think there's going to be huge unrest regarding the central bank digital currencies. I don't think they're just going to come out and be uh, totally accepted. I do believe that they have to crash the system first so that the, the public begs the government, please save us. And that's what they'll come out with is the digital currency. That seems to be the playbook, right? Is that there's this crisis and then the public it comes out uh, asking for the government to save them and you just see a reduction of liberty every single time that happens. Correct. We have a few viewers questions here um, regarding stock certificates, mining stocks. Um, it seems like in the event of a complete reset, how are people going to be secure about um, having any sort of funds in a brokerage or, you know, supposed stock certificates saying that you own a certain amount of some company? Do you have any faith in that kind of investment right now? Um, and do you think it would survive a complete reset? Yeah. If you own a, if you physically hold a stock certificate, that is proof positive that you own it. It is the ownership itself. So whatever percentage you know, however many shares you own is a percentage of the total outstanding, and you'll be able to trade that. Uh, if you've got certificates in a brokerage house, you've made a big mistake. I mean, I've talked about this. Uh, Jim Sinclair talked about this since, uh, I don't know, 2003 or four. Get your certificates because when your broker goes down, whatever stocks you hold, they're in your broker's name. They're not in your name. The, they're on the broker's balance sheet for your benefit. And a lot of people don't even know this, but when you buy a stock and if you have a margin account, your broker is, is lending your stock out. They're lending your stock out, getting paid interest. How do you think that the, the brokers make money by charging $7.95 per trade or free trading? You know, nothing in the world is free. And if you think it's free, well, you made a big mistake. It's not free. Your broker's making tons of money by, by lending your stuff out. Done every day, all day long. And that's really one of the main reasons to hold the certificate in your hand, right? Right. When things go down, if your certificate is lent out, how are you going to get it back? At, at your broker. If your broker lent your, your, your security out and the other side goes bankrupt or your broker goes bankrupt, you lost your shares. But if you have a physical certificate, that is proof positive that you're an owner of XYZ Corporation. Now, Evan is wanting to know about stocks as well and how it uh, relates to the get out of the system. One of the things you just mentioned is holding the certificates in your hand is a very good idea. Um, Evan asks specifically, if there is a, de a demand is destroying event, all assets will plunge. How do you see the different classes of assets rebounding? Uh, when everything, when all is said and done, gold is money. Whatever, whatever new currency ultimately uh, comes after the collapse, and you know we will have definitely we will have reset one. I don't think that will work. We will definitely have a second reset, which may be the Mother Nature reset, or even a third reset. But Mother Nature is going to have a reset, and. Once we get the, the, the real Mother Nature reset, gold and silver are money. So if you own mining shares, you basically own a, uh, you own a, a producer of money, something, you know, an entity that creates money. So, I mean, I would not, if you own uh, gold and silver mining companies, don't necessarily just throw them out because you think they're going to go down. It doesn't matter whether they go up, down, sideways, or whatever when markets are closed. It's what happens after they reopen. And these things that are, I mean, you, you'll see, you'll see some uh, companies that are trading at 10, 20, 30 cents right now that once this thing resets, 
and and things reopen, um, depending upon the reserves in the ground, the ability to mine, et cetera, you'll see some of these 10, 20, 30 cent stocks. First trade will be 200 bucks on their way to pick a number. I mean, if you're talking about $100,000 gold, million dollar gold, you know, uh, $500 billion gold, who knows? Uh, Mining companies will give you much more leverage over the physical metal, but mining companies can bankrupt. So there is risk in owning uh, mining companies, but there is much more reward because of the financial and operating leverage that they, they offer. Now, we have a viewer's question here on platinum. I know that's not much of a monetary metal. It's more an industrial metal. Your perspective on how that might perform uh, in a reset? Well, that's the reason you don't want to own platinum or palladium, because basically they are industrial metals. And once industry ceases, uh, you know, if they're not building, if they're not making cars using catalytic, catalytic converters, um, platinum and palladium are not money. They're industrial metals. So I have no interest in them, and I advise people not to own them whatsoever. Now, back on the topic of the bank failures right now and how people are reacting to that, uh, we have a viewer mentioning how a lot of people in the mainstream are moving into money markets and treasury bills. Um, your perspective on the safety of that alternative as opposed to uh, bank accounts, it doesn't seem like that would necessarily be, those options would necessarily be as safe. Well, people have short memories because back in 2008, there was a money market or two money market funds that actually broke the buck. They started trading at 99 cents, and some of them were uh, gated. In other words, they closed the gate and you couldn't get your money. Um, and just understand that it's all corporate paper. I mean, your, your money markets, uh, if we have a credit collapse, they're credit. Uh, on the other hand, U.S. Treasuries. You will get your dollars back. The Treasury will pay you your dollars. But again, what are your dollars worth? It, does a cup of coffee cost a hundred dollars? Does it cost a thousand dollars? Has the you know what is the purchasing power of the dollar? It, it's going to collapse. So, you know, leaving a bank, yeah, it's a good idea. But you're jumping from from a bank to a money market. You're jumping one from one skillet to another. And you're jumping to another skillet if you do treasuries because, uh, like I said, you know, you're going to get paid back in dollars and what's the purchasing power? And you're really – the only true exit door is gold and silver. Right. And I've said this many times before also. When all is said and done, people will count their wealth in ounces rather than dollars or euros or British pounds or what have you. We have a viewer question about um, holding gold and silver alongside, you know, an in individual investor may have personal debt, right? So your perspective on holding debt through this reset, will it get canceled out or is it better just to pay off debt first? I mean, if you have a lot of wealth, obviously, you know, it's just cleaner to, to pay the debt off. Now, I have for years when I was younger, um, I always held at least an equal amount of gold versus whatever debt I had. So I could go to sleep at night and know no matter what happened, I could pay my debt off. Um, and in today's world, I mean, if you've got a, you know, three and a half percent, 30 year mortgage, why would you pay that off if you've got the same amount in gold? Because five years from now, 10 years from now, it could be two weeks from now, who knows? The, the value of gold is going to explode. And you will be able to pay your debt off with uh, a lesser amount of gold. Now, at some point in time, go back to the Weimar Germany experience. What they did after after the currency blew up was that they rewrote, and this was this was a uh, it was a, a government law. I mean, the government edict that if you had a loan, you could no longer pay it off in uh, like marks the loan was converted to gold grams. So you had to pay it off in gold. And really what happened there was once uh, once they once they did that, once they, they changed the contracts, real estate immediately went down 30% and then started going down for the next, what, five, six, seven years. 
because there was no money on the street. People had no money to buy the real estate with. Now, before we let you go, Bill, I wanted to just thank you so much for your time today. If our viewers are interested in learning more, they can go to BillHolter.com. That's your new website where you have posted articles, um, very insightful articles. Is it every week or how often uh, are they posted there? We have some original stuff and it goes you know, from week to week. Um, and it's very, very similar to what we did at JS Mindset. Uh, we look to see uh, public articles. I'll make a comment on, on the article, why I think it's important or, or why I think it's not important. So there's there and all my interviews get posted there. So it is a, a central place for people to, to go to, 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 you know, follow my interviews. Um, I did want to mention, uh, you can go to billholter.com. You can contact me through that. Um, or, uh, you can contact my business email address. It's bholter at hotmail.com. Fantastic. And I believe all that information is on the website. We'll link it in the description of this video. Any last thoughts before we let you go? Um, Bill, can you kind of share with our viewers, what should people be watching out for right now? It seems like there's so much news all the time. It might be hard to sift through the noise, but what are the things that people should really be paying attention to right now? Um, there's too much to pay attention to. That's the problem. Just know that the outcome is going to be bad. So I think people should should focus on being prepared. Uh, when I say be prepared, you want to be as self-sufficient as you possibly can in every way, shape, or form. That means uh, power, water, food, uh, the ability to defend your, your property. Um, you just want to become self-sufficient because when you dial 911, nobody's going to answer. When you flip a light switch, it may not work. Uh, when you open your faucet, it may be dirty water. Who knows? Um, but like I said, there's too many there's too many things to, to follow at this point. Just know that the end result, and it, this is no longer Bill Holter's opinion. This is math. The end result is the, our way of life that we've known all these years. It's going to go away. It's going to go away completely, and it's going to happen really quickly when it does. Our viewers really appreciate your time, uh, Bill. Thank you so much for your time, and God bless. Thank you, and God bless you. Miles Franklin Precious Metals is one of America's oldest and most trusted bullion dealers. Miles Franklin is A-plus rated and accredited by the Better Business Bureau, licensed and bonded, and has zero complaints ever registered. Here at Liberty and Finance, we are licensed brokers with Miles Franklin. To order, simply call us. Discuss your needs and we can let you know our live inventory, prices and availability. And lock in your order over the phone. Once your order is locked, the price is held for you regardless of market fluctuations. And the metals are reserved for you awaiting your settled payment. Within one business day of ordering, you will receive an email invoice detailing the order and payment instructions. Miles Franklin accepts payments by bank wire, ACH or electronic check money order, check mailed priority mail, and cryptocurrency. The fastest forms of payment are bank wire and cryptocurrency. Upon settled payment, metals will ship out within three to five business days. You will receive tracking information via email. Domestic shipping charges are $15 for any order under 500 ounces of silver or 10 ounces of gold. For orders larger than that, domestic shipping is free. The package will be boxed, fully insured, and labeled discreetly with no indication of the contents inside. For your privacy, the name Miles Franklin will not even be on the package. To talk to myself, Kaiser, my brother Elijah, or my father Dunnigan, call 1-888-81-LIBERTY. That's 1-888-815-4237.